Hi everyone, this is Alexander Antsipov, and we are starting a series of video on how to integrate with payment systems. And our first payment system will be Stripe. As you know, Upper allows to create not only mobile application, but also web and PWA applications. In this video, I will focus mainly on PWA and web applications. And how to integrate with mobile applications, I will explain in one of my next video. Ok, let's start. Uh, Stripe provides two types of APIs, old API and new API. So right now I will consider new API. In Stripe console you can create your products. So I already create two products and now we'll add one more product. So let's do it. Name will be pillow. Let's upload image for our product. Provide description. And then we have to specify a price of our product. So it can be standard pricing, package pricing and so on. And also it can be recurrent and one time pr price. Let's sell our pillow by 30 American dollars. Then let's save our product. And in the same way you can add as much products as you need. Then we need to download template Aper IO project, which is available by this link. So just go to this link and template will be downloaded. Please don't worry, I will add this URL to comment to this video. Now let's go to the Apri, create new project and select from backup option and then choose just downloaded file. Open, create and wait a while. Our application was imported and we can open it. Let's expand pages folder. Here we see three screens, Stripe product screen. Here we can select required product and specify quantity. After pressing by button we will be navigated to Stripe web page where we can pay for this product and then we will be redirected on two screens success screen or cancel screen. Depends on the status of our payment operation. In order to test this application we have to provide our Stripe configuration data. First of all, it is a publishable key which should be provided for Stripe session checkout service. To get it, let's go to Stripe dashboard and open developers and then API keys section. So let's copy publishable key, go to Apri and paste it here. Also, our template includes some server code scripts. All of them are located in Stripe product folder and one server code library, Stripe Keys library. Here we have to provide our secret key. So again, let's go to Stripe dashboard, copy secret key, go to Apri and paste it here. That is, now our application is ready for testing. Let's remove frame and wait. Application is ready and let's select just created product, specify quantity as two and press buy button. We are redirected on Stripe web page. It is very important in order to perform payment operation safely. Then we have to provide our information. For testing purposes, we can use some predefined credit card number. So I will use this one, which is which uses uh, two-factor authentication. Let's provide this number and. Absolutely any information as expiration date and CVC 
code and press play button. Uh, this is test page of two-factor authentication complete. Our payment is finished and now let's go to the Stripe and open payments. Here we can see our payments. So amount of money, description, customer name, date and so on. Now let's investigate more deeply how this application works. For that let's open Stripe product screen, select page here and open events panel. After page showing we invoke Stripe product list data service. Uh, this service invoke Stripe product list service which doesn't accept any parameters and return the list of our products with prices. Now let's take a look implementation of the service. For that let's go to server code and open Stripe product list server code service. Here we invoke two REST services. First we get list of products, then get list of prices, then link product with prices and return list of products with prices. Now let's open Apple again. So when we get the list of product, we store them in products variable and show list of product as select item options. So we iterate through product array and just show name of the product and price ID. Quantity is just an input with ng model value as quantity. And after clicking buy button, we invoke Stripe session create. So let's go to data tab. This service again invoke Stripe session create server code service which accept three parameters quantity, price ID and host. Let's close it and uh, go to server code and open create session service. First we read price ID and quantity then we get ID of two server code script success and cancel and also we get host as a parameter construct cancel and success callback URL and invoke Stripe API for creating new session so here we provide price ID cancel success URL quantity and so on the sample response of the service you can find in our visual editor on the response tab. For us the most important information is session ID. So when session is created we invoke another service. Stripe checkout session checkout which accepts two parameters publishable key which we already provided and session ID which we took from previous service. So and probably that is success screen is an empty screen with just success title and the same for cancel screen. But at least uh, there are two services which we didn't review. Uh, first is a Stripe success callback this service is invoked when payment was successful. Service accept one parameter, session ID, and uh, please pay attention on this REST API call. Namely, in this service it does nothing, but in your real application you will be able to invoke the service and get session information for what it is needed. So, um, one of the possible solution how you will integrate your application with Stripe will be the follow. Uh, there is a, some user identificator and you create a session and store in database session ID which is associated with uh, some user ID. 
when payment is finished, uh, Stripe success callback is invoked, you get session ID and is able to identify the user who made this payment and then perform some action. And last our service is uh, Stripe cancel callback. So here it does almost nothing, just redirect. But in your actual application, you can add uh, more, more advanced logic. Last question, how to move this logic into already existing application? And I will show you how to do it right now. We have to create upper IO plugin with name temp, provide some version, category, and then uncheck export entire project, select required screen, services, JavaScript, and that's it. Press export. Okay, now let's close application. Create new one. And import. Temp plugin. Okay, so three screens were imported. Let's add button on screen one, add, add navigation to try product screen after clicking on this button and test. Okay, now let's press our button. Again, we navigate it to try product screen. Let's select some products. Provide information. So as you see, payment again was successful. That is all what I wanted to show in this video. Thanks for watching.